Hi everyone, uh, this is Bob Dietrich again with another edition of the ADHD Toolbox. And I am excited, as I always am on these interviews, uh, because we're interviewing somebody uh, specifically that talks about supplements. And what's cool about these supplements, and what you're really going to want to pay attention to, is that these supplements are um, specifically uh, created for your specific uh, challenge, whatever you're going through. So we're going to dig into that. So these are custom supplements based on uh, assessments that this company does. This company is Saber Sciences um, here in California. They're actually right up the road from me. I'm in San Diego and they're up in Carlsbad. So, but they work um, exclusively, almost exclusively, I think, um, online. And so they can work all over the world. It's not a problem that you don't live in San Diego. You can still use their supplements and, and talk to them about how supplements might be able to help you with your challenges with ADHD. And representing their company today is Janine Staller. Janine, welcome to our program today. Hello. Hi, Bob. Hi. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to talk specifically about, um, about your company and, and about all the awesome stuff that you guys provide. You work with all sorts of people, especially people with ADHD. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, your company. How old is it and when did it get started? Let's get some background first and then we'll jump in. Yeah, thank you. So let me tell you about Sabre, Sabre Sciences, a little history. We've been around a quarter of a century, about 25 years. Um, we started primarily as just a lab working with doctors and different practitioners. We're a, um, a research-based lab. So we're also involved in doing research testing for different universities. Um, but we focus primarily on stress response. In the early days, we were just looking at cortisol and DHEA, and then uh, some of the sex hormones, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone. And um, the way the company kind of evolved is we started seeing patterns of stress response that matched up with certain set of symptoms that patients were reporting. Okay. And we said, why, can't, why isn't anyone making a product that can deal with this specifically? we're seeing the, the cause, the underlying cause of these symptoms. And we realize that the majority of patients with stress issues, what goes hand in hand is a gut problem, absorption issues, stomach issues, digestive, you know. So we developed a technology that uses a liposome, mm -hmm. liposomal technology, which allowed us to make a cream and we would put the active ingredients within this liposome that allows it to penetrate through the skin. So we can make product that bypasses the digestive process and you have much higher absorption with that. And it's a lot easier than taking a handful of pills, especially for kids. So you just rub it on your skin? You just rub it on your skin. Wow. Mm -hmm. We have actually two methods of liposomal delivery because not all people like cream on their skin. You may have sensitive skin. So we can do that in a liquid dropper as well. It's still a liposome. So you just hold it under the, under the tongue a little bit. Uh, some you can just swallow. You don't have to hold. But either way, it's, it's in that liposome. So it's protected and it penetrates through the tissue. So even after you swallow it, it's going to be penetrating through and um, be absorbed much higher than capsules, tablets, soft gels, you know, oral intake. And what, is the, what does the liposome do then? Well, it protects that active ingredient. It's, it's got many, many layers. Okay. So once it gets into your system, it slowly dissolves. It, there's like little bursts. So what's also better is it's almost like a natural time release in a way, because it takes about two hours, we've studied, to complete the process to really get into your body. So another benefit is rather than a sudden hit, of a bunch of um, supplements getting into your system and then you pee it out right away. This is um, more slowly absorbed into your system and it's more direct. Got it. What does it do once it's in your system? How, how does it help the person that's using it? Well, yeah, and that depends on, you know, the formula that we're giving you. It depends on, on the ingredients. Um, we can make product that's for energy, sleep, focus, um, cognitive, so yeah. this is kind of like the, the, the what you just described, the liposome, I think you said? Liposome. Mm -hmm. That is the delivery mechanism. And then you can add in whatever ingredient that you want that's going to help. Um, yeah. A lot of compounding pharmacies will offer this now um, for like bioidentical hormones. They do it in a cream. But what's unique to Sabre 
Um, and we have worked with pharmacies in our past. We realize how industry usually makes these creams. What's unique is that we are not taking base ingredient like the powder of it, something and stirring it into a cream and then saying, here's your product. We make each um, ingredient its own cream concentrate. So B12, um, theanine, you know, whatever ingredient that you want, choline, these are all their own cream concentrates that then get weighed out and mixed together to create a formula for the individual that's unique and specific to what they need. Wow. So we try to consolidate as much as we can into the one product to make it easier on the person. So you've got, you know, the bulk of what you need into this one product, you rub it into the skin and it's customized as far as um, the milligram dosage, the actual ingredients, uh, the frequency, how often should you use that in the day? Everything is customized according to what the person needs based on their history, the testing that we do, which we can go into. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it makes it very um, user friendly. The likelihood of negative effects from it is very low um, because we have all this validation, you know, prior to creating the product. Sure. That's fantastic. I mean, this is like, this is the ultimately the way you want to go if you're going to do supplements, right? I mean, yeah. you can just get supplements off the shelf or even from another company. They're just generic supplements. They don't know your specific um, situation physically, right? Your, biologically and yeah and even if i could say you know what's really popular online right now is customized supplements you can search that customization but usually they're going off of a questionnaire answer these 20 questions <laughs> tell us about yourself and okay here we go here's our recommendation and they call it customized but that's still not getting to the nitty-gritty of what's going on in your biochemistry what's going on with your cortisol stress levels what's going on that's causing you to behave and have the symptoms that you have. We look at that from the body. So we're trying to merge a more allopathic uh, Western model of validating it with science and with some facts there from the body and then using alternative natural methods to remedy that. Um, so it's, it's much more accurate than just getting, you know, basic questionnaire. We're getting the nitty gritty on you. Awesome. So uh, not just we go beyond the questionnaire to to actually you're taking fluids from your body to be studied and analyzed to know exactly what's really going on in your body. And what I loved in our conversation before was that uh, a lot of times you don't need the blood necessarily. Sometimes you do, but a lot of times you just need urine and saliva in order to uh, collect that. And and because it's right. difficult or uh, you know to get the blood from from a child, it's like easier to to you know, do urine and saliva. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a non-invasive um, at-home collection. We only, in our lab, we work with saliva and urine. And typically for pediatrics, for kids, it's just a one-time morning urine collection. And even for young kids, if they're not potty trained, um, we have a diaper insert that makes it easy. You just put it in, that collects the sample, and then they can mail that into us. Um, we do the saliva testing, which will look at cortisol, DHEA, your stress hormones, the stress response, and how that's affecting reproductive hormones and sexual development. Mm -hmm. um, so usually that's for like ages 13 and older. So for kids younger, you know, there's not really much of a need to look at the hormones. We can do it if it's needed. Um, what's unique about the hormone testing is that also that's not just a one-time collection because what happens at 8 a.m., could be completely opposite of what's happening at 4 p.m. and you're and you're going to treat off of an invalid sample kind of you know your body is dynamic we're constantly changing uh, we are living beings so looking at the circadian rhythm is nice because we get to see not only the dynamics of how it's changing but evaluating that circadian dynamic of how cortisol moves throughout a 24-hour period um, gives us an indication of that person's history in terms of how they've dealt with stress over time, the accumulative, the accumulative, accumulative effects of stress. Um, because the, the circadian, the cortisol output tells the story of what's gone on in the last two years, five years, 10 years, and on and on. 
um, because there's different stages of stress response that an individual can be in. And that tells us length of treatment, how um, aggressive maybe it needs to be, how long it's going to take. We can give you a lot more guidance when we have that full picture. Got it. So let's say somebody wants to do supplements. They want to try it. They're concerned their, their child or themselves have a deficiency of some sort, and that's part of the problem. You know, they've, maybe they've done some research. They've, 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 just, they've decided, yeah, I think this could be the problem. I want to start with the supplement, right? And um, they're thinking about you know, just going and getting the generic one, and maybe they haven't even heard of the customized supplements that you provide. Um, what's the difference that they should be aware of? Why, and why is it like, you know, what's the effects that could happen? Are they just throwing their money away? Is there something deeper? What's happening there? What's the difference between yours and say a generic brand that somebody's going to? I'll tell you what I, what I hear from a lot of our clients and as a mom, I've been there myself where I thought, I don't want to, you know, get my kids involved with work and I'll just do this myself. And I go to health food store and I'm in the vitamin aisle. You stand there and you look at these shelves and shelves of product Right. Or you go see a naturopath or someone and they say, oh, you need to take this and this and this. And they have 10 things give you. The issue is those can all be great products, but there's no guarantee that that's going to really hit that target for you. And what I see for a lot of people is it might hit the target and you say, wow, this has made a difference. And it will last several weeks, maybe a couple months, but eventually you start noticing oh, the symptom is coming back, or oh, they have a new symptom could pop up. We call that the climbing the ladder of supplements. So you go back and you think, oh, now I need a product for this new thing that just came up. You know, what's going on? And you add something else in, and then you add something else in. Um, inappropriate supplementation, honestly, is like the number one problem. One of the mottos with Sabre is less is best. And the owner, Victor, he'll say, take only what you need, not what you don't need. Because let's let's think about it. If you're taking a product that maybe isn't best suited for you, um, also excipients, different fillers that can go into um, lower quality, cheaper, over-the-counter products, mm -hmm. that's giving metabolism something extra, a burden that it has to break down, it has to process. It's going to create a chemical reaction. Everything we put in our body creates a chemical reaction. And you have two choices. It has to be used, do something with it, or it has to be eliminated. You know, it has to come out of you. That creates work. And any kind of work in your body is considered stress. And so you take a bunch of products that might not be best suited or have other ingredients that are questionable, you're actually adding stress. And that's why over time you start to see, oh, my symptoms are creeping back or, oh, I'm getting some new symptoms, and you don't connect the two, that maybe the product could be causing this, and you climb that ladder of adding more products in, and before you know it, you have all these things, and protein powders, and green drinks, and pills. Yeah. A lot of times, we have to tell people, stop. <laughs> stop trying to doctor yourself, and um, that's a nice thing. When you do the testing with us, we have a pretty um, thorough questionnaire where we want to see like what you're taking and stuff we work with you to weed out uh products that may not actually be necessary or appropriate and we can work through your list and say hey these ones are good stay with this but these ones over here stop using those products these could actually be directly related to the imbalance that we're seeing in this lab and lo and behold a couple weeks later they stop the product and oh i'm better <laughs> you know i'm feeling improved so um that's great because you know i i know if, when i go i feel like i should be taking multivitamins or something like that and i walk into uh and people talk about b vitamin or there's i should be taking d or whatever and i walk into the uh you know the store and the wall of vitamins is there and i'm literally yeah if i had a dart i'd just throw it and i'd probably be better off than me trying to figure out um, yeah and and even if you get the right one it's um dosage then you have an issue of how much and how often, what time of day, you know, we can get that specific with the person. And yeah, speaking of B vitamins, like we were talking earlier about magnesiums, Bs, they are actually considered in research as coenzymes to neurotransmitters. They facilitate action in the process of making 
dopamine, serotonin, epinephrine, they're a big deal. You know, we shouldn't take it lightly using B vitamins. And in the world of B vitamins, there are many different forms, like B12, for example, has many different forms, and they are not all equal in what direction they're going to go in, what process they're going to support. So you really want to be careful the type of Bs, the dosage, um, and that's just one family of vitamins. Then you have others which have similar um, issues. Yeah, because people tell you, you know, with some, with some vitamins at least, that you know you take them and whatever your body doesn't use just pees it out, right? Yeah. So so you know just take five and <laughs> or whatever, right? And yeah. Not what I don't use, but what you're saying is that your body is actually um, is that's actually tasked with that that extra stuff, so it has to work harder and it creates stress in order to get it out, right? Yeah, exactly. You got two choices: your body can use it and say, "Yes, I need this. I'm going to put it to use," or it has to clear it. And especially with bees because they're involved in that action reaction process of making neurotransmitters and also breaking them down. Um, if you're taking the wrong kind, you're going to be telling your body to um, build something else maybe over here when your problem is really over here. And now you've created this huge imbalance. I'll never forget one time we had a, a person that was complaining of the shakes. She just had such bad anxiety. It was an adult and just didn't know why this was coming on. And she had this trembling that wouldn't go away. And we um, tested her and there were some imbalances in her test, but her supplements looked okay. Like nothing should really be causing this till we got to her protein shake. We had to ask, is there anything else that you were putting in your body? It was just a regular protein shake, but it had been fortified. They added a family of bees in there. And we said, we think your shakes are causing your shakes. And <laughs> so we had her stop it and it took about a week. Her, the tremors went away. The B vitamins, inappropriate forms. No more shakes. Yeah, no more shakes. <laughs> um, wow. And we see that with, and kids are, um, kids are very, they're like a clean slate. You know, um, they're very sensitive and reactive to product. They usually respond right away and have a beautiful response when you can get it right. Um, so we want to be real careful, especially with their little bodies on, um, what pathways, what neural pathways we're, we're pushing the buttons on mm -hmm. and making sure that they get the correct forms that we're not adding stress burden, you know, to their developing systems. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Fantastic. So, um, so you make custom, custom vitamins. So people, you're not throwing your money down the drain. Um, and you are you're hitting the specific pro, um, uh, problem or ailment or, or uh, concern that you have, why don't you take us through the step-by-step -step process that, that somebody would go through when they start working with you so our, so our viewers can get an idea of what it's like to work with you and, what, um, and how that might look like. Yeah, so the initial step is you, um, you work with us to decide what test is appropriate. And usually for baseline, um, initial testing, there's really only like two or three choices to keep it simple. We want to get as much information as we can. So for if we're doing kids under the age of 13, typically it's just a one-time morning urine collection. Pretty easy. Um, I can't remember if I already mentioned, but we have the diaper inserts right. if they're not potty trained yet. So that makes it easier for collection. And with that urine test, we are looking at um, neurotransmitter metabolites. It's important to note neurotransmitter testing. Uh, we're not looking at brain levels. That would be different. We're looking at excretory, what comes out through the urine, what's being used in metabolism. So we're looking at pathways of how the body takes an amino acid and converts it using B vitamins, minerals, uh, vitamin C, other things, converts it and makes dopamine or makes epinephrine, you know, and serotonin. And especially with kids with ADHD, you know, um, issues with um, being impulsive, being inattentive, hyperactive, that all has one common factor of stress response, imbalance and stress response. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking at in the test is their stress responding systems. Are they coping metabolically? So they order the test, it's a urine collection. 
over eight, the age of 13, we can also offer the saliva collection, which gives you those circadian dynamics of cortisol. Why don't I like that was younger than 13? Um, over the age of 13, you see with a saliva test, it involves the sex hormones as well. So we look at progesterone, testosterone, estradiol, cortisol, DHEA. And usually under 13, there's not much of a need to look at the hormones. Um, over 13, yeah, because then they're developing. Um, and then on with adults, because the um, stress response that's going on in the system, stress has a direct um, impact on your reproductive system. Think about it when, if you're running from a bear, the first thing that your body is going to do is safe, get out of there, go. It's not thinking about, well, let's have a baby. So <laughs> your body can actually, it will take your sex hormones, convert to stress hormone, keep you going. And that's what happens is we'll see these high cortisol sometimes and real low progesterone estrogen. It's the stress response. Um, so if needed, we have that as well. You can do that with the urine test and get a complete picture of the neurotransmitter pathways, look at what's going on metabolically, um, how well your body is detoxifying, how well your body is um, producing calming agents to balance the stress, like serotonin, GABA. Um, and then let's look at the deeper picture of how stress over time has taken its toll on you. That's the circadian rhythm and the sex hormones and such. We look at all of that. Uh, in, get, through, the, through the urine test, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. if you're an adult that works with you, a kid, a kid once a day, right? And you can use mm -hmm. it. If you're an adult, is it two urine tests? So if it's an adult, it's still one urine collection, but then we add on to that the saliva collection, which is six, six saliva collections done in a 24 hour period. So that's called the circadian. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, urine, kids under 13, single urine and saliva for adults, people over 13. Either way though, you still have the choice. If you don't want to do this, the hormones, you could just do that single urine as well. That's fine. Sure, sure. So, but it gives us more, the more information, the better. Do you do yeah. a, a questionnaire as well? At the and then yes, they'll get an intake form that's pretty thorough. And for people that are already on a, a protocol from a doctor, existing programs, that's completely fine. If you're on a ton of medications, you're on supplements, we want you to keep your routine, stay on those products because we want to see what it's doing to you. We want to see if intervention is needed, if they're working, do you need to go off of it? Should you stay on it? So for our purposes, we say stay on your products, do your normal thing, collect the specimen, and then we'll tell you, yeah, this is good or no, that needs to change, you know? Got it. Okay. Yeah. So step one, uh, give you guys a call, contact you, you'll send out a questionnaire and the the collection uh, trays or whatever for the mm -hmm. urine. Yep, they get a little kit. Everything is in the box. Gotcha. Mail it to you. Comes to your front door. Send it you back. do it. Mm -hmm. Send it back. It has a prepaid um, shipping envelope. You send it back to us. Takes about two weeks for test results. It's about ten days. Okay. You get your report emailed to you, PDF format. It comes by secure email. Then once you get that email, uh, we will contact you and let you know that the test is being analyzed by our clinical team here. So once the report is ready, two things happen. We send it out to the patient and then our team will analyze the report. And we really, we really do. Every single person, we read those intake forms. We study what they are taking, put, it, put the information together, and we'll create a written interpretation of what we are finding in the lab report. So we'll explain point by point the out of ranges or the imbalances that we see, what that means as far as relating to your symptoms. And not only the individual imbalance, but the relationship of how one imbalance in one category can be contributed to or, or related to another imbalance in a different category. So you get an idea of how the report as a whole um, has meaning, not just the individual out of ranges. Um, so we try to, you know, unify it. So um, the patient understands, you know, what that means as a whole. And then at the end of that, we have our list of recommendations as far as um, 
diet changes, if additional testing might be needed, uh, products. Usually we recommend, you know, the customization is key. We'll recommend the custom products, but sometimes we recommend stuff that, you know, isn't from us to keep it very neutral. We might say, hey, you know, it could be something simple you can go and get online. Um, so we'll put together recommendations. Once that's complete, that usually takes a couple of days, you know, get that analysis done. Then you get a second email. We send that over to you. You can look at it. And then once that's all together, you have the choice of you can call up and say, yeah, I want to start, order your products, or you can schedule a consultation. We have a medical director, an MD on staff. Um, so through our medical director, we offer a consultation and you can discuss the report, discuss your symptoms and get, you know, more of the personal um, questions, answers and get, and, and get involved. Um, so once that's done, then yeah, um, changes might be made to the protocol because we have that more personal discussion now. Um, but once the consult's done, the protocol's done, then it's the choice of let's get started on the program. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to note, let me tell you that with customization, don't forget the products are made with a specific intention to correct X, Y, Z, to correct something specific that we see. So once that, and the products will work, they will correct the problem. Once that problem's no longer there, your products need to change. And, and with metabolism, what can happen is you clear up one pathway, okay, this is good, but now something else that was also having an issue, maybe wasn't seen so much in the previous test, now something else has kind of come to light that needs attention. So with most people, I see um, a series of about three lab tests spread out over a year or two, where you test, you get your products, you're on it for a little time, your body starts to make um, improvements, but then we need to retest you and see how are the products working, what's it done to you so far, and then change it. It's, it's fluid in nature. We have to keep up with the changes that your body is making until we get you to homeostasis, to balance, where all pathways, where everything looks good and we can just make a very simple maintenance. What's nice too about doing repeat tests is with a lot of people, people there's going to be um, common areas where they're more vulnerable, where they're like just your weak areas. So in the repeat testing, we'll see mm, this person just as a trend has high or low value of dopamine, DHEA, whatever it is. We'll know that's an area for maintenance that we're gonna have to really support. Um, so there's you know many benefits to the repeat testing, but um, that's part of the protocols. Once you start, we like to repeat it so we can monitor exactly how the products are working and um, when we can get you to a more maintenance and less therapeutic phase. Wow, that's great. So um, let's, let's talk about the ADHD specifically, and then I'd like to talk a little more general on other, um, on other ways that these can help uh, do prevention uh, for things like uh, maybe diabetes or... or so talking about ADHD specifically, I know you have a product. I'd like to know, uh, have you tell us what the product is, how it works, and what else that you uh, might do, what, you, what else you've done for people with ADHD or autism or ADD or attention disorder, those kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. That are often happening with, with children and, and, and adults. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, with ADHD, I know there is no one cause that has been studied you know there can be there's no one cause but what is a commonality among this group is stress response with people anyone with the symptoms you know if you go online and you look at the different symptoms of adhd and i have a child with adhd you can see all of these symptoms the common factor is stress it, a, a metabolic it's a stress response an internal stress response um, Another thing that's been studied is magnesium deficiency. Magnesium deficiency among kids with ADHD, um, kids that are on the spectrum. I think most adults in general, magnesium deficiency is a big deal. Um, and like we were saying before, um, not all magnesiums are equal. 
like with B vitamins, there can be many different forms and they're gonna all have different instructions, different things in your body. Um, you we have, before, you know, cause I was, I was mentioning that I, I was taking Calm, uh, you know, a generic product off the shelf. Yeah. Whatever. And uh, you were talking about how it's magnesium, but yours um, works a lot different than that. And it's a different type of magnesium. And I didn't realize even that there were different types of magnesium. Yeah, yeah. Specifically for ADHD, right? Yeah, well, we use a patented form of magnesium that's been clinically tested. The studies have shown that with this form, um, the, the ability to stay with a task and complete the task is much higher than with other forms. This magnesium, not to get too technical, but this magnesium um, is able to cross the blood brain barrier and is actually found in brain tissue, whereas the majority of other magnesiums cannot, or they haven't been studied to do that. Um, this magnesium is patented for that purpose, for focus, for cognitive, and it works fast. Um, I can tell you with my kids, I've had those mornings where you're rushing to get out. It's like, hey, put your shoes on. You don't want to have the argument or the, you know, oh, they're, like I say, the ability to complete a task. Your kids are off doing something else, anything but what they should be doing. Um, with my daughter, we had the issue of, you know, let's get your shoes on. Let's go. Let's go. And, you know, she's off in her world. And I can see that. And I say, okay, I need to give you a little bit of this product. I need to give you some of this. I call it happy sugar because it tastes good. It looks like sugar. It's a treat. So I said, okay, take your happy sugar. And it's just amazing how it can like make or break your day. Um, because then within a few minutes, you see it start to work. And it's like, oh, thank you, honey. Okay, shoes are on, ready to go. So happy to have something that I can use. Yeah, and it works probably better fast. Too, right? Yeah, yeah. I know with, like, with teachers and such, I know when I forget to give it to her, when I, when she doesn't have it, those are going to be harder days. And not only for my peace of mind, teacher's peace of mind, but my daughter, you know, the individual, these kids, they're not oblivious that they are struggling. And so it's hard for them as well because, you know, they end up feeling bad. You know, hey, why couldn't I do that? Or, you know, they see other kids maybe that don't have similar struggles. And, and so for their morale, for their, their emotional health, I feel like it's so important that they have something that they feel good with. Um, so the product, it's called iMag T. iMag T. I stands for inositol. It's a type of B vitamin. It's a, that's what gives it the wonderful sweet flavor that it has. It's not a sugar. It just naturally tastes sweet. We combine that with magnesium L3 and 8, which is abbreviated MAG-T, capital T. So that's the name, I-MAG-T. It's a patented form of magnesium. And um, Looks for- like you can come in a tea bag, right? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it's not a tea. No, not a cup of tea. Um, it's a powder. So you can do it um, into liquid, or you can just put it right in the mouth. For kids, usually we recommend a quarter teaspoon of the powder. Adults is half a teaspoon. Um, you can do it two, three times a day. Some people use it for sleep. Some people just um, do it for focus and calming. It's, it doesn't zap your energy. This is what's unique about it, is that it brings you to focus and that ability to stay on task, to complete a task is amazing. It, it really does that for you. Um, but it doesn't drop you down. You don't feel fatigued or uh, cloudy by it because you're tired. Um, and for nine out of 10, we've had very small percentage of people that have ever said they had stomach issues. But um, for the majority of people, there's no um, like loose stools or stomach issue like you get when you take other magnesiums. So for kids, there's no issue of you know tummy problems or anything like that. Um, yeah, so it's been our flagship product. We've had school teachers say we need to put it in the water fountain. <laughs> like every kid needs to have this. We've uh, we have doctors and uh, small compounding pharmacies that sell it. You know, in their stores. We have a doctor. It was um, very special to us. We're working with her grandson who has ADHD, and the school nurse has to give this to him. And she was saying 
how, um, how much improvement they saw in his classroom behavior, in his ability to do his homework, in his testing, and how he felt good. He felt so proud of himself and they hadn't seen that before. And the family was just, they're cheering. You know, one product could make that difference for them, so. And is that happening because there's a deficiency in their brain? Of I think, or? I think, um, I think there's a couple of factors, yeah. The magnesium deficiency is one thing, so we're, we're giving them what they need. But yeah, with ADHD, you know, there's differences in brain development for those kids versus people that don't have the issues. And remember, with brain development, are we talking there's the physical, actual aspect, or there's the metabolic, the neurotransmitter, that stress response. Mm -hmm. Magnesium is a major cofactor to normalize epinephrine, to make serotonin for mood support. So once they get that magnesium in the brain, what the body is able to do with it, I think gives them a lot of, um, it's that missing link, those uh, neurotransmitters that they need to, um, stay calm, to calm themselves and to counteract whatever impulses are going out that, you know, are giving them that excitability. It's now they have a buffer, you know, something, the magnesium is helping to create a buffer so that they have that calming agent with their excitatory impulses and they can function rather than being completely overloaded and just flooded with all this, what we call excitatory impulse. Right. You know, we naturally all need that calming ability. Right. Yeah. Eventually. Right. Yeah. yeah. So when I hear there's a deficiency, right. And there, and you take a supplement, the question I have is, and I think many of our viewers might have is that, um, is there a time when you can come off that supplement? For example, you know, you said, well, for, for about a year, we'll go through and you'll make take three tests throughout the year take supplements and then and we'll shift it up and take some different supplements and we'll shift it up at that point when the year is over um, in your protocol or with the magnesium and stuff is there a point where the deficiency is no longer deficient and you can stop taking the supplement i think so i mean everybody is different because it's we're constantly being bombarded by stress by um, different demands. So I, what I've seen with clients, and even myself personally, is yeah, you can get yourself to a level where you've um, restored and built up your levels enough, you can go off of it, but then you can feel when things get demanding, you have higher stress response, you're gonna need the product. And it's kind of knowing what you need. Um, so you can feel it, hey, this works for me, I'm okay right now, but when life gets more demanding, I'm gonna use this so I don't slide back down again. Yeah, that's great, um, uh, and I can feel it too when I'm when I've been taking the, my magnesium product, which I'm going to definitely be switching to yours because it sounds like uh, it's more efficient, right? And mm -hmm. it's brain quicker, and it just helps. Um, uh, it's just more effective, right? Um, it's yeah, it's that's a good word. It's more efficient. The um, your body's ability to utilize it for biochemical purposes is much higher than other types of magnesiums. They're, they're great and have their own purpose, um, but this is working, you know, for brain related issues, right. which is right. where we are with the ADHD community. Right. And, and, and where anxiety lies, right? And a lot of our mental health. Issues. Yeah. I've, I would imagine, and if you could share uh, perhaps what are some of the, the um, uh, pharmaceuticals that you've seen people come off of, as a result of taking your product? Oh, I mean, a lot. And let me just give the disclaimer. When we work with people that wanna come off meds, mm -hmm. we have to have the prescribing doctor involved. You know, we are not in the business of telling you to stop your prescription medicines. We can't do that. But people that want to, yes, we and we can work with the prescribing doctor. I've seen them come off of um, Lexapro, Wellbutrin, Cymbalta, Valium, Clonopin, I'm Ambien, um, you name it, sleeping pills, antidepressants, anti-anxiety. Ambien? So the people who have trouble sleeping and are taking Ambien because of it, right? Now they are relying on Ambien to sleep. Yeah. You actually have supplements that replace the Ambien so eventually they can come off it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it takes time. And usually people with medications, let me just tell you, um, an element of the testing we haven't discussed is um, the body's ability to detoxify. Like I was saying, 
not just make the neurotransmitter, but to break it down, to clear these things out. If your body isn't gonna use it, use the vitamin, it has to get it out of its system. How does it do that? That involves the detox process. Um, a lot of times with people that have ADHD or spectrum or on medications, your detox system is somewhat compromised. It's, it's overloaded. You're not able to clear out. It's like epinephrine is made, epinephrine doesn't go away <laughs> and that's creating all kinds of problems same thing with medications it can it's getting into your system it's triggering an effect and it doesn't really go away um, so we have to involve uh, we uh, have very specific ways of detoxing the individual to correct metabolism metabolic issues um, and then we interlay the supplements and trying to get their own body now to make um, these sleeping hormones or chemicals and regulate their system. But detox um, has a lot to do with it as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what came to mind as you were talking earlier was um, thoughts. I, I was reading a book called Dirty Genes by um, Dr. Ben. Um, ben Lynch. Ben Lynch, right. Ben Lynch. Awesome book, by the way. Yes. Very technical, right? A lot of technical. Yeah stuff in there so uh, but the information is great and I know he talks about uh, gene um, mutations and things like that he also talked about um, and what was struck me is was that you know when he catches it when he catches certain ailments or certain mutations before they get too bad he can prevent things like Parkinson's and cancer like that mm -hmm. at a certain point you know it's it is what it is and, and changing those genes doesn't help does what you do do the same thing uh, or some, some, something similar like like by by doing these supplements can you prevent these things from uh, occurring and what what can you prevent um, in my opinion yes and clinically proven peer-reviewed validated science hasn't gone there yet but in my experience yes and what is known okay with dirty genes let me get into that just briefly if i can i'll blow your mind with this um as we know, environmental factors, supplements, they can trigger what's called epigenetics, the turning on and off of certain genes. So you do your genetic test, maybe you did your 23andMe or whatever, you did your genetic test and it says you have MTHFR, you have a certain gene mutation, yes. And so you say, okay, I'm doing all the research, I need to take a special form of folic acid, I have this not always. What we see in the urine testing, we're looking at the flip side of genetic activity. It's genetic, um, genetic expression because your genes are coenzymes. Your genes are what gives your body the instruction of how it's going to convert one neurotransmitter to another to another and create a certain action. The genes are, are coenzymes in this process. So by looking at the process, by looking at the pathway of how metabol metabolism is working, we understand the kind of instruction that it's getting from the genes. So some researchers have called our testing a view of genetic expression, the activity of these things. So we have certain markers in our test to identify methylation status. If MTHFR, if, even if you're positive for it, if it's a concern, okay, the, the gene SNP is just telling you you have reduced ability. Most of the time it's reduced. Sometimes it can be increased, but it's just telling you that you have a potential for a problem. But we have to look at the activity to see, but is it actually a problem? And if it is, what measure of treatment, what dosage is going to be right for you? Not all people need the same dose of folic acid. Not all people need the same cofactor Bs to go with it, to sandwich it with other B vitamins. Um, then it's nice to look at, you know, we can't just treat off one gene. We have to look at the family. And again, that relationship of one imbalance to another. Um, so Sabre, we have partnered with a genetic lab. We also do genetic testing. And we can interlay that in with the neurotransmitter um, pathway testing that we do and look at the genes, look at the genetic expression, the activity, and really get to the nitty gritty. And let me just tell you real quick, um, 
we've seen discrepancies in genetic reports from patients where they get their genetics analyzed, right? They did a certain software online, you can pop it in and it prints out plus, 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 minus, whatever. Same individual, you only have one, and your genes don't change, one set of genetics. But the reports vary, they don't match. You can have two, three different reports. How is that possible? Um, the way that genetics are interpreted by the particular lab is dependent on their research of what they're gonna consider the risk gene. What's the problem gene? And then they mark you as you know plus plus or plus minus. Um, not all of these labs agree on what the problem gene should be because um, research is changing, more people are getting their genetics tested, so we have a bigger pool of what normal is. Um, so Sabre, having our roots in research, mm -hmm. when we analyze genetics and we make that uh, call of what's the mutated gene or what, you can be guaranteed that is up to date, as accurate as the community has it, um, information. So we'll see like genetics coming from other labs and they'll say, I, I have MTHFR, we need this. And I've seen it with patients and we do ours and we validate it and they actually didn't. And that makes a big difference, huge difference in treatment and in how we analyze the report. So just putting that out there, the world of genetics, um, you really wanna be particular on where you get it tested um, and that it's a medical grade genetic lab direct to consumer, there've been some um, issues with accuracy. So, but we get into that too. That's a bit, that's more complicated, but we do that as well. That's fantastic. And probably more for adults, I would imagine too. Yeah, so. We actually, well, we work with, um, we're one of the sponsors uh, with an organization called TACA, Talk About Curing Autism, where um, they offer support to children in the spectrum and to their families. And with those kids, it's, um, I don't want to say it mandatory, but it's very helpful to have genetic with these kids. Um, and I think with the ADHD community as well, it can be very helpful because again, it's um, not only helping to validate what we see in the test, but also like you said, as um, giving them that protection from further problems down the line and knowing that, hey, when we give them blank supplement that we know that they need, they might have genetic issues, detoxing it after a few months. They, that could be a, a weak point for them. So we know going in, we're gonna support, support all around wherever they need it so that the product can work best for them. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I have a ton of other questions that we just don't have time for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is fascinating. And, um, and I'm sure our viewers have a ton of questions. If they have questions, they wanna have a consultation um, I understand that you're going to give them a free 15 minute consultation if they want to call in or, or ask something mm -hmm. about this, mm -hmm. uh, along with the discount. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, go to sabersciences.com. There's a contact us button. Just send us an email or our phone number's right on there. Give us a call. Um, a lot of clients have a hard time deciding what test should I do right away? Should I test? Or maybe I should just, let's give iMagT a try. Let's give some of these over-the-counter products a try. So um, call up. You can ask to speak to me. I'm Janine. Um, the other person for clinical discussion is Victor. He's um, our clinical lab scientist he'd be happy to talk to you just ask for a consultation an initial um, consult to discuss the program we'll do that free 15 minutes normally those are 75 so you get a savings um, and then we'll give you 20 percent off on uh, whatever you order whether it's testing or imag t the uh, special form of magnesium for focus um, yeah, so you'll get an initial discount free consult i'll be happy to discuss you know what's the best option to start that's fantastic. I mean, yeah. uh, sounds like I would go uh, give you a call, get the IMAX T, get that consultation, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, get some testing done just to see what the recommendations are and go from there. Yeah, and IMAX T, it's great to start with because people of all ages, if you know, if the little kid, if your child has a problem, usually it's affecting the whole family. So it's always like if kid is stressed, mom is stressed. We all need to take it. So people of all ages can use it and you know feel better feel your best we we want to see that person's potential and help them to access it to be the best person to really um 
get to your fullest potential. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on our show, on our program. This has been an uh, enlightening conversation. No idea that you could customize your vitamins to be to handle your specific deficiency. And it sounds like, you know, uh, when your chemical makeup is off, it could really cause havoc and maybe even cause um, uh, behaviors and reactions that seem like there's something else. Like maybe you don't have ADHD, maybe you have a chemical. Right, right. It could be. By handling that situation. And I'll tell you, there is nothing better than the cream supplementation if you can do it. I have a four-year-old as well, and she's got tactile issues, and it's horrible struggling with a kid with, can you please take this pill, and you're crushing it up, putting it into their food, and they don't want it, you throw the whole thing away, and it's a mess. There's nothing better than just, hey, honey, rub a little bit of cream on their foot, on their hand, and you are done. You've just given them five major vitamins or you know whatever, and they're good for the day. It is so easy. It's wonderful. Wow. Yeah. I love this. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. We have listed the phone number below um, as well as the contact information. So you don't have to go searching for the website. You just click on it. You can contact them from there. You can give them a call, set up your consultation, let them know that you came from the ADHD toolbox uh, so they can track that and, um, and get your discount if you want. Thank you, Janine, for being okay. on the program. And thank you for watching thank you. this episode of the ADHD toolbox. I hope you got a lot out of this one. I, I know I did. Talk to you soon.